I think most of you know the California Department of Fish and Wildlife is a significant partner with the Commission. Uh, we couldn't do what we do without them. Uh, we're pleased to have uh, Director Chuck Bonham with us today. All right. Um, Patricia McPherson, Grassroots Coalition. Uh, I want to thank Marsha Hanscom for her presentation on Biota Wetlands. I think it's important for you to understand that this is a uh, freshwater seasonal wetland. The premise that it is the DEIR saying that they are returning the ebb and flow of the saltwater is a false premise. Um, and we have all of the science behind that, including uh, information that's been included in the DEIR, but there is no freshwater seasonal alternative. And that's why we asked for the DEIR to be rescinded um, and redone. And Marsha is very correct in as much as it wasn't Fish and Game that created this uh, DEIR. It was a, a private business that worked with the Coastal Conservancy to create it that has ties with Playa Vista, which is important because it's Playa Vista is the entity that is diverting all of the fresh water away from Biona, which is a violation of the 2014 Groundwater Protection Act and numerous other laws, which we now have the Coastal Commission, as a matter of fact, in May, that we are bringing up all these issues and they have asked to have this agendized as to why is all this fresh water being allowed to be diverted away from Biona, harming Biona. Grassroots Coalition sued with regard to illegal drains on the property that Fish and Game uh, has on there as, as well as uh, Playa Vista. We prevailed in that. Those drains had to be capped. They are now ponding in that area, which is something that Fish and Game Department said could not happen because they are utilizing Playa Vista's consultants, which are providing false and misleading information. All of that needs to stop, and the Coastal Commission is seeing this now and are very disturbed at what they're seeing coming out from the Playa Vista consultants on behalf of uh, Fish and Game Department um, using their attorneys, I want to say spouting off the same information, which is incorrect. So we look forward to looking at this as a freshwater seasonal wetland and getting these uh, fresh waters returned. And we are also dealing with the uh, water board also on this issue, and they're aware of it. Um, today, though, also I would like to bring your attention to, if we could bring up the videos of the parking lot area that is across from Fisherman's Village. This is an incident that took place. Um, I'll take whichever video you pull up. Um, but it's an incident that took place that there's a firing range from the fire, uh, the sheriff's department there that uses as a temporary firing range that I don't know, we certainly weren't aware of what it was, but it uh, caught fire and we had bullets flying all through the parking lot, all out into the street. So whether we have to put in, uh, which I have, Grassroots has put in a petition to ask that this uh, process, this procedure of having this facility on that parking lot be rescinded um, and that it not be allowed to be used. Um, don't know, it hopefully will come up. The other thing is, is that in Area C, um, there, the Little League has uh, the ability to go out on the uh, uh, playing fields there, but what we have is a video of partying going on at night with tents and, and all kinds of music and, and whatnot going on. I do not believe that that's a, um, an action that is allowed by the Department of Fish and Game, um, and we question that. And we will also put in a petition to have that not be uh, something that can be done out there in the evening that is a disturbance to all the wildlife in the area. And um, I was told that we do have this video available. I'm, I'm wrapped up if, as long as we can see the video, which I was told that we would be able to, to play. Yes, it was approved also for... All right, thank you. President Sklar, if I might ask a clarifying question. Uh, I wondered if anybody from the department could say anything about the, the firing range that she referenced. 
I'd be glad to. So, <clears throat> Commissioner, welcome. Congratulations. The topic of leased parking on the property has come up periodically uh, to the Commission, and there are two aspects of that. One relates to leases with the LA Department of Beaches and Harbor, and I suspect some folks in the public comment queue will talk about that momentarily. The most recent speaker is talking about a second lease between the department and the LA County Sheriff's Department, which is kind of across the street and down the road a touch. And the department did not know that on the Sheriff Department's leased space, they had a mobile trailer, and it large trailer, and enclosed, and was using the space within the trailer as a training um, facility for their department employees for firearm safety. We have, post the event you just heard described, informed the LA County Sheriff's Department that the parking of any vehicles other than automobiles is forbidden and they need to not do what they were doing. Thank you so much, Director Bonham. Could please also just additionally say the referenced partying a moment ago, my understanding is that was the Little League's opening day ceremony. So please, uh, can we start the video? <coughs> Thank you, Director. Welcome. <clears throat> Good morning, uh, Kay Foster. I'm here on behalf of two organizations, Climate Reality, and I'd like to read a statement um, from an earlier meeting <clears throat> at September 29th, 2018. There was a forum titled Bulldozing Bologna Wetlands Contributing to Climate Change. And Andrew Ellis, who's also a Climate Reality member, um, and he was, he was then president and a soil scientist, was asked whether or not it was better to convert grasslands and coastal shrubs to salt marsh because of the strong values of carbon sequestration. He explained that the current amount of plants and marsh soils at Bologna Wetlands provides significant carbon sequestration carbon that would be released into the atmosphere with significant bulldozing pro um, project. <clears throat> and he added, do you want to wait 100 years to semi-replicate a salt march that nature has already made? We don't have 100 years. So that's for climate reality. <clears throat> for the Bologna wetlands, I'd just like to speak on behalf of 250 birds that visit there every year. I'm, I'm not sure everybody knows, but the, um, the wetlands actually are a group of um, different habitat types, there are actually seven habitat types. And the birds use individually those various types, like they may lay eggs in one place and they may uh, um, cohabitate in other places. And it's very important that all of those be preserved. It's a balance there. So bulldozing in any of those zones is going to create havoc within all of those zones. So that's my part. Thank you. It says don't bulldoze Bayona. And as they say, a bright, green t-shirt is worth a thousand words. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. Good morning. Well, my name is Cindy Hardin. I'm speaking as a private citizen and as an employee of the Los Angeles Audubon Society. I am going to speak about Diana, but I shall make it concise and brief. Thank you very direct. much. I want to advocate for a thoughtful, non-industrial scale project for the Biona wetlands that includes enhancement of upland and riparian habitat that is already present in areas A and C and the reestablishment or, and, or encouragement of freshwater throughout the reserve. Historical records and reports have shown Biona to be a prim historically a primarily closed estuary with myriad seasonal freshwater habitat. This included, not so very long ago, especially if we're talking geological time, a 240-acre stand of willows, 240 acres significant, at the confluence of Biona and Sentinella Creek prior to channelization and paving. I want to see this approach 
as an official alternative in the yet to be released revised EIR for the Biona wetlands, not just alternatives one, two, and three that were heavily favored and heavily favored saltwater marsh in the wetlands in the initial draft EIR. In addition, I'm encouraged to see progress in the elimination of a parking lot on the reserve. I look forward to seeing that going forward off Fiji. And um, Los Angeles Audubon has had great success in the Baldwin Hills with a native plant nursery. We've done a lot of restora restoration in the Overlook site there. I would like to see something like that at the parking lot site in addition to restored habitat. Thank you, and thank you for being local. I got to ride my bike and see Biona on my way here and see all that I'm speaking of. Thank you. Please. Good morning, sir. Good morning, commissioners. I'm David Warren with the Sierra Club, and I'll read this letter from Sharon King, PhD. Dear commissioners, as a long time, 21 years plus homeowner in Mar Vista, and a person dedicated to the wild lands of the state for many decades. I write to you to express my deep concern regarding the fate of the Biona Wetlands Ecological Reserve and the abundant wildlife that thrives there. As representatives of the California Fish and Game Commission, you have undertaken the responsibility to protect the wildlife in California and in wild, its wild lands <coughs> as you manage them. But the current plans for habitat altering in the guise of robust restoration via bulldozing some 2.5 million cubic uh, yards of land of the Biona wetlands is diamet diametrically opposed to your mission. Um, there are numerous types of animals in the Biona wetlands either on the endangered species list or, or on lists of special concern, species protected specifically under California law. The current planning documents for bulldozing these wetlands ignore many of these species. Indeed, in their comments in the, to the draft EIR EIS, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service noted that there are problems with the project, specifically a lack of clear objectives. The Fish and Game Commission has been thankfully intent on the public uh, gaining access to the wetlands, but much uh, remains to be done as only a small portion of the wetlands is currently accessible. Um, I encourage the Commission to work with the community and with the elected officials who represent them to find ways that the public may access this lovely wild areas. The last wetlands of Los Angeles. I consider the Biona wetlands a gift of nature to a large vibrant city that needs contact with the natural uh, world now perhaps more than ever, but the uh, coastal ecosystem does not need experimentation that, that will involve bulldozing, landscape alteration, the habitat destruction for the many hundreds of species of flora and fauna that call it their home. I humbly ask you to protect it from them and them from this dire fate. Respectfully, yours, Sharon D. King, PhD. Uh, my name is Anna Christensen. I'm the conservation chair for the Long Beach Area Group of the Los Angeles chapter of the Sierra Club. I'm sure you know this gentleman. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Hamilton. Okay. Okay. Hamilton. Thank you. Thank you. Down, please. Thank you. Uh, oh, so people can stay back. What? So I, I'm here uh, in support of, of course, uh, restoring the Bologna wetlands if we're really, if what we really mean is taking care of what has managed to survive and not uh, disnifying it. Uh, we have a serious problem in Long Beach in the Los Cerritos wetlands. A project was just approved over uh, which, by the Coastal Commission, which violated the Coastal Act, allowing massive new oil drilling up from 300 to 24,000 barrels a day. You are I believe eventually going to be involved, if you have not already, in a mitigation bank plan for the, that area. Uh, I also want to point out that today is the second day of a activists all, uh, in many, many countries, the Extinction Rebellion, where lawyers and kids and everybody are trying to wake us up to the fact that species are going extinct and we're included in that. So this is really an emergency. Uh, I appreciate your concern for wildlife and the coyotes. Uh, we have an issue uh, in the wetlands with a fake restoration. So we are looking at a restoration industrial complex uh, all over. And uh, we ask that uh, you guys uh, participate in a way that protects the species, even if they happen to live in a non-native tree, like a palm tree, that you not uh, support projects no matter who authorizes them or who funds them, such as the California Coastal Conservancy or the San Gabriel Rivers and Lower Mount, I'm sorry, 
San Gabriel Mountains and Lower LA Rivers Conservancy, both of whom back this massive expansion of oil drilling. So, you know, eyes, eyes open. Thank you. Is there anybody else, uh, is there anybody else in the public who'd like to speak during public forum on an issue not on the agenda? Seeing that, I'd like to ask uh, Director Bonner to speak to the, uh, the parking lot issue at Bayona. Sure. So, perhaps for the benefit of the newest commissioner, but overall, here's my summary of the three parking lot issues uh, connected to Bayona. And let me start just by acknowledging many people up here today who care passionately about the property. Uh, some others who equally care about it couldn't attend, perhaps. You've heard a difference of opinion on certain aspects. And I welcome the differences of opinions. That's how our civil processes are supposed to work. And on the parking front, the first parking related item you heard is about the sheriff's lot, the sublease. And I told you my view on that. The second issue that has come up over time uh, relates to the LA Department of Beaches and Harbors. And I think previously the, depart uh, the commission received a petition from Bayona Wetlands Land Trust. If not a petition, then certainly consistent oral argument that you should ask the department to further regulate that activity. And just so we're clear there, the department did communicate with the Department of Beaches and Harbors in March of this year, notifying them of a change in our existing lease conditions and that we were going to no longer authorize the employees of the businesses at Fisherman's Village to park in the lot. And my understanding is Beaches and Harbor are currently collecting the issued parking lot keys. Um, we had told the Harbor, Beaches and Harbor Department, we would stop that commercial parking. Our understanding was that they were working on a parking study. We hadn't received that study, so we took the steps to kind of restrict the activity. We will revise and create an updated lease agreement that's consistent with this approach. But I'll just tell you, there's a opposite side of this discussion. Um, I would imagine that many of the commercial entities that are now using those parking lots are going to either tell you, the commission, or us, the department, that their employees who are typically low income coming from far away to provide services now have nowhere to park. Notwithstanding that legitimate argument, you know, you've received a petition and oral argument to ask us, the department, to restrict that activity, and those are the steps we've taken. There's a third parking issue that's come up from time to time, and it's the segue to the environmental impact report conversation you just heard. There have been allegations in the past that the department was producing an environmental impact report which would memorialize and secure the construction of a new parking garage as part of the overall restoration effort. And I just want to put that to bed. Um, that is not the case. Um, I think the deputy to my right has said it before. I'll confirm it. A parking structure is not going to be considered as part of the restoration project. We're not inclined to build a parking garage as the outcome of the restoration endeavor. Um, so, <clears throat> You heard some conversation about the Little League field. I mentioned that it was my understanding it was a ceremony related to opening day. I've taken a chance to get a little more detail since the public comment. Let me just clarify. My understanding is one of the Little League's teams had gone to a tournament in San Diego, had won the tournament. The league decided to have food for the team when it came back from San Diego. Um, they had a tent that one of the grandfathers of one of the players owned. They put up the tent. They tried to put up the tent to do the right thing and keep the arrival of the kids in one spot rather than running around all the various fields. Um, many of the kids participating at the San Diego tournament were without their parents. It was a trip for the, you know, the tournament. The field was the already designated pickup drop-off location and the parents had music. I think what they'd say about the music is they liked music. And the kids arrived from the tournament, and that was the pickup spot um, at the end of the tournament. We've received inquiries from the advocates whether that was a permitted activity. 
That's what I know about this instance. Let me finish with the uh, restoration. Uh, the public comment suggests there's a difference of opinion about actually how to do restoration of the property. That's how the process works. It is true the department has a draft environmental impact report out for review and feedback, and we seek to finalize that as soon as possible and continue through the public process around doing restoration at the wetlands, including figuring out what's the right alternative in the long run. Great. Thank you, Director Bonner. Appreciate Hello, my name is Jackson Garland. Uh, I'm with uh, BioNet Institute and here to urge you to uh, to alter the planned future that is uh, that this commission is responsible for. A plan that is destined to fail is what is known as your restoration project uh, that will bulldoze 2.5 million cubic yards of soil in order to bring back native species due to the similar uh, restoration project in Malibu. Not only did this uh, project rid all wildlife and growth in the area, but some of the species that are uh, on the list of concern uh, have still uh, haven't uh, returned to the areas uh, returned to the area years later. Uh, given given the status of our planet, we're in uh, no position to be making these decisions that will uh, give us a future uh, that denies us to look uh, past the year of 2050. Uh, we can't make rash decisions that evident that evidently don't work in the first place. Even uh, ridding ice plant from the area causes five other invasive species to take its place. On paper, having only native species on the Bayou wetlands, uh, like it was a hundred years ago, uh, seems good on paper. But the native organisms that inhabit the area now already uh, have adapted to uh, the invasive species and rely th and rely on them for uh, I don't know circle of life. <laughs> Uh, taking them away will be more of a burden than it will be uh, beneficial. If you passed basic biology in high school, all species have survived this long on this planet uh, and are well adapted to live alongside a species of different origins. Yes, and an environmentalist, and I'm here to speak out for Bayona wetlands to protect them as a natural habitat. And what I cannot figure out is this assault on nature especially where we are at and global warming. All of this destruction of our natural habitats, digging up soil, killing um, animals, creates climate change. And as we know, IPCC, we have 10 to 12 years to get our act together. And when Fran Pavley spoke about the wildlife overpass, that it's taken decades, what I cannot figure out, as humans, we want everything so fast, we text, we email, we have Amazon that brings us packages immediately. We want this instant gratification. But when it comes to protecting environment, it takes decades. Marcia Hanscom has been trying to protect Biona for 20, 30 years. It was 2,000 acres, now it's down to 600. I mean, really, we should be ashamed of ourselves as humans who are to protect our lands and species. Because without them, we do not survive. It's an intricate balance between us and nature. And the fact that we are destroying it is really not good. And we are guardians here to protect our Mother Earth, to protect each other, and to protect animals. And we keep 600 acres, that's all that's left, and now they want to come in and bulldoze it and do some restoration? For what? That's like trying to redo the Grand Canyon. It's really ego-based and it's not right. And I'm here to speak for and to support Biona not being bulldozed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good morning. My name is uh, Robert Vandehook, Roy's my nickname, and uh, uh, welcome commissioners and department staff and, and that to Santa Monica. You're getting closer to the Biona wetlands today. Um, it started uh, for us as an ecological reserve when Marsha and I drove to Bridgeport, uh, where five other commissioners uh, were there and voted unanimously to establish the ecological reserve. Uh, there was a, a, a passage of the department, not sure they wanted to have the baseball field in the eastern part of the Biona wetlands be in the ecological reserve, but two commissioners convinced the other three and that got included in the reserve as well. <clears throat> 
from Bridgeport. Uh, we come down to Atascadero t about two years ago at your Fish and Game Commission hearing when uh, issues came up about Biona wetlands. And at that time, I spoke to the captain of the Sheriff's Department for Marina Del Rey and Michael Tripp of Beaches and Harbors of the County of Los Angeles. And in that discussion, I learned that the only reason that the Sheriff's Department wanted to have the parking lot was that they have this shooting range trailer that's there. And uh, that was two years ago, so you could almost suggest, I mean, was I prescient? But because what I told this captain is, uh, let's have your shooting range in another area of the county where you put the portable trailer in Culver City or in Lawndale. And um, so now that looks like that's going to happen from this point forward. And uh, the sound effects, you were missed when you saw the footage, but there were more than 500 rounds of ammunition that went off and it was only about 10 strides, 10 good strides by walking to a gas well from that spot. Um, and it, that could have gone off as a secondary explosion. I see I have 30 seconds left. So from Atascadero, now you're here. So uh, your department, in the department in doing the EIR draft had the meeting at Burton Chase Park in Marina del Rey. I'm hoping maybe the next time you'll be at that facility to have the commission hearing. <clears throat> um, the white-tailed kite next to your uh, warden there uh, on the snag was um, the, your commission in 1930 established it as a special raptor and has more protection than any other animal in the state of California. It's the only it's it's the white-tailed kite, black-shouldered kite um, commission decision. Good morning. Good morning, President Sklar, commissioners and staff. I'm Scott Culbertson, executive director of Friends of Biona Wetlands. I'm here today along with Catherine Pease from Gila Bay, Nessa Frechette from the Friends, folks from LA Waterkeeper and LMU, representing a coalition of environmental organizations that supports comprehensive and scientifically based restoration of Southern California wetlands. I want to remind the commissioners of the strong support from credible, well-respected organizations regarding restoration of the Biona Wetlands. Our coalition includes Friends of Atlanta Wetlands, Gila Bay, Los Angeles Waterkeeper, Surfrider Foundation, Trust for Public Land, and others. We look forward to release of the final EIR, EIS, in response to the comments. Meanwhile, we are concerned about misinformation about the restoration that is being spread by special interest groups that lack credibility and scientific expertise. These are the same groups that oppose the Malibu Lagoon restoration, which five years post-restorations shows great success. You should have you should have received our, our restoration facts flyer, uh, which was created in response to the anti-restoration campaign being waged. In 2003, the state purchased the reserve with the stated intention of restoring it. Restoration of Lionel wetlands for habitat and public access is long overdue, and the wetlands continue to degrade the longer we wait. We support alternative one in the draft EIR with some additional recommendations that restore and create diversity of wetland habitats. Each year, thousands of children from all over Los Angeles and adults participate in Friends of Atlanta Wetlands education programs, and volunteers come to our community restoration events in the wetlands. At these events, we engage, we connect, we educate, and, we, and our visitors learn the importance of wetlands and, of our, and become environmental stewards. All of this is done on the roughly 30 acres of the of restored habitat in the wetlands we have now. Imagine how much more could be accomplished if the reserve were restored. We had a full 577 acres. Thank you for your time and the opportunity to provide Thank you. comments. I'm going to ask that people not make comments while other people are speaking. They respected your time, and, and it's, this is not a, a roundtable debate. Thank you. Please, welcome. Good morning, commissioners. Thank you for your time. My name is Nessa Frechette, Manager of Scientific Programs at Friends of Bino Wetlands, speaking in partnership with Scott Culbertson, who just heard from, Catherine Pease from Heal the Bay, LA Waterkeeper, and LMU from uh, Center for Urban Resilience. Friends of Bino Wetlands and the Wetlands Restoration Principles Coalition Steering Committee believes that the restoration of the Bino Wetlands Ecological Reserve will increase habitat quality and diversity to benefit native wildlife, provide greater protection from flooding and the impacts of climate change, improve water quality and watershed connectivity, open public access trails for education and nature appreciation, protect rare and endangered species, 
and add ecological, aesthetic, and economic value to the surrounding community. Together, the Wetlands Restoration Principles Coalition developed nine principles of wetland restoration for Southern California wetlands, which can be found at wetlandsrestoration.org. These principles apply to the restoration project that's been put before us. Restoring the Bauna wetlands will increase functional integrity by improving and enhancing wetland habitats. It has scientific basis. The need for restoration is supported by the documented loss of wetlands throughout Southern California. It has ecological balance. Restoration will enhance wetlands without compromising existing diversity by protecting seasonal freshwater wetlands, salt pan, sand dunes, and returning tidal influence. It has an appropriate scale. Restoration actions will be sensitive to uh, particular areas, but considering that 3.1 million cubic yards of fill have been dumped on the wetlands, earth moving activities are necessary to meet restoration goals. Watershed hydrology will be improved by restructuring the creek. Scientific monitoring will support adaptive management. Climate change will be addressed and compatible uses of public trails will be utilized. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, President Sklar, commissioners, and staff. My name is Dr. Catherine Pease, and I'm the Director of Science and Policy at Heal the Bay. I'm here today with my coalition members in support of the comprehensive restoration of the Bayona wetlands. Um, again, we want to ensure the Fish and Game Commission knows that there are science-based organizations with large membership bases that support the more comprehensive restoration options that were put forth in the draft EIR, EIS, specifically Alternative 1. We urge the uh, Commission, as well as CDFW staff, to release the final EIR EAS as soon as possible. The restoration of the Bayona wetlands is long overdue. Um, as you know, we are 16 years post uh, purchase or acquisition of the wetlands by the state, and we still have not seen any major restoration or even a selected alternative. The science is clear that the majority of the wetlands are degraded and continue to worsen the longer we wait. The steering committee of our coalition uh, supports a project that um, includes removal of significant amounts of legacy fill and sediment that have been placed on the wetlands. We support the removal of concrete levees along Bayona Creek to reconnect the creek to its floodplain and the wetlands. We support restoration and creation um, of a diversity of wetland habitats without restoring to any specific point in time because that is not feasible. We support a project that accounts for and adapts to sea level rise, providing for the maximal long-term benefits. Further, we support a project that creates publicly accessible trails and educational opportunities that are compatible with ecological goals. For these reasons, we support uh, components of Alternative 1 in the draft EIR EIS, which will accomplish these much needed actions of sediment removal, concrete removal, and establishing connections. Further, these goals are supported by the 2018 uh, Regional Strategy for Southern California's Wetlands by the Southern California Wetlands Recovery Project, which was contributed to by over 50 scientists and resource managers. We look forward to seeing the final EIR EIS. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Lisa Pimiani. I'm with the Center for Urban Resilience at LMU. And I'm just going to give you an anecdotal uh, example of my experience. I've been involved with the Bayona Wetlands for over 30 years. I started as a docent, and I pulled ice plant in the eight acres of dunes. We've restored it. We have the El Segundo Blue Butterfly now. I can tell you that one of the original board members, the late Dr. Howard Towner from LMU, would be turning over in his grave right now if he heard the kind of comments that are going on this morning. It's about restoring the Bayona wetlands. And I trust the process. I trust the Wetlands Restoration Principles Coalition. One of the agenda items you have today is about the parking lot over at Fiji. I can tell you we're having equal challenges at the parking lot over at Culver Boulevard. I hope that you make the right decisions for all of the constituents who use the Bayona wetlands. My dream and the dream of many people involved with Bayona is for it to be a fully restored Bayona wetlands estuary with well-regulated trail systems on the peripheral borders and wildlife thriving in the wetlands of what we have left. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Appreciate it very much. 
Um, so with that, we uh, conclude public forum.